uh, Skunk here back with another game review. Um, so let's get started. Anyway, I do these uh, I do these reviews to kind of go over my plays, uh, research lines, lines I could have made, uh, mistakes I made, and go back and try to fix them if they were fixable, or maybe maybe just ditch the idea completely. <laughs> Um, today we're playing a Ferris Control S that you can find on Stream Decker, and the uh, description's down in the uh, down in the comment or not the comment description of the video. So you can definitely click on that. Definitely hit up me on Discord. Deck list is there as well. So, all right. So we see a hand of this. Um, Got a Murktide, not really happy about that. But we got a piece of removal, Opt, and a Sleepy. So we're happy about Sleepy. Um, that's what our deck is constructed to be on. You know, it's our turn one, you know, drop. So we're not expecting it to do much. It adds to our fairy count. It adds uh, board presence. And just something that sits out there until we're ready to start swinging and turn the corner later. So... By now, if you've watched my other videos, um, you, you kind of know the reps with Sleepy Boy. So. so our opponent hits a Misty Rainforest. Could be a lot of things. Don't really know right now. And then we draw Drown. We've got three land, so we land drop. Um, it's important to drop the other blue just for Counterspell. Uh, threaten counter spell. So, so he gets a breeding pool. Still don't know what he's on. Okay, and this is our first indication that we are playing Living End. So Living End is a weird matchup. It's very um is very painful for us. We have to have we can have the exact we can have every tool in our book. In our hand, it still lose. Um, this is one thing. Uh, this is one thing about this deck, and particularly one card um, that is very frustrating. And that card is Violent Outburst. Now, I've met a lot of cards in my day, but a Violent Outburst with Living End allows them to basically go through three counter spells possibly and still win the game and it's very it's very frustrating to have everything go right and have the exact hand you need and with the mana you need and still lose and that's why i think violent outburst is ban worthy because of probably what you're about to see because this scenario happens more than i want to admit it happens so um so anyway he cycles a big creature imagine that living in cycling creature so we get a choice here um so he go ahead he street race twice so he is he is helping our cause he is at 13 life so he then sphinxes and cycles again now the best thing for us this game is he misses his turn to land drop whether he does that or just doesn't have it if he has eight cards in hand and kept a one lander, like, you know, he drew one, two, three, four. You know, this is why the deck added the four cyclers and the island cycle. You know, four cycling mostly for the int. Uh, just to get their land drops out. So they could play the last land. So they could do it. And what that does is it makes it consistent. But we're finding a variance here that we're not getting that consistent. Unless he has it and just didn't play it. We don't know. But he misses this. This really makes us happy. Like, because this deck can do broken things. So, because of that, we decide we're going to have to end this game eventually. So, I'm deciding to go ahead and do Sleepy. So, we can't get it, get it out at all. So... We'll get. We'll go ahead and use the mana there. My other option was to opt, but you see, we have an odd, odd amount of mana here. So being able to opt this turn is going to be easy, and we're not going to have to worry about opting. You know, 
We can do that. We can hold Drown because he has plenty of things here. So he also discarded Living In, by the way. So that's how we also know he's on that. So, and now he gets his forest. Yeah, he comes in tapped because he knows he knows next turn we're good on this. So here we opt easily. It's not a thing. So we won our fourth land. Uh, be able to cast the Snapcaster Mage and drown twice is nice, or even Edict. Edict is less important here. The Mark Tide sucks because it's just too slow. It's good later, but... So, here we go. We get another Counterspell in our hand. With land and mana to cast it. So, we attack for three. Take them to ten. He then draws another land. And then passes with Bowmasters. So, we attack. Take them to seven. So, here... The reason he does this here is so he doesn't have to take the damage. Uh, he does it in combat, which is fine. So he has six cards in hand. No, you know, no man untapped. Now he was he was short two turns because he didn't draw lands. Okay, if you can imagine us with this could have happened turn three of him. Okay, this could have happened turn three. This is how broken this card is, and this is why I think this is. Of all the cards, this card, it's the Cascade at instant speed that's the problem. So this card needs to probably be banned, in my opinion, because of the power level here. So he goes and grabs another copy of Living End, which is a, shouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> we drown. He force negations. We drown. He force negations. <laughs> you see, you see this? Like, come on. Come on. So then he just, you know, he just wins, basically. So. So. First of all, he had two, he had double, double force negation. Like, what's up with that? Now, granted, he had to, he had to pitch two cards, and he pitched, he ended up pitching two other Cascade spells. <laughs> Come on. Like, that's ridiculous, you know? And then swings for lethal, so. Anyway, game two of watching more of the monotony of living in. So we got through two, and the only reason, like, he would have even beat me even worse if he would have been there two turns before that. Think of that. Think if he had that on turn three and not turn five, when I had four mana available. I would have had three mana available, and then it's an easy win for him to get through one counterspell. Like, that's asking a lot from a deck. We we typically... Fairies plays very fair magic. Alright. So, we see this. This is good for a couple reasons. We have a Drown. We have a Spell Surge Sprite. Spell Surge Sprite is the key here. Okay. It's very good. Um, and also, the fact we have some draw. We have... Ara, we have Mastermind. These things are all going to come together. We have two land on which to cast it. We are playing Control Shell, and so we, we're not super tempo. We don't have a super threat-based kind of game plan. We're here. We're trying to control our opponent for the most part. So we opt. We get a Borrower. We throw Borrower away because the bounce is unnecessary. If he goes off, we lose. That's, you know, he's super combo y, and we know that. But, you know, now we've added, now we've added another Spell Surge Sprite to the mix here. So, and a land. So we play land. So, 
He then does this. We play Mastermind to get it out. Okay. This is the deterrent. This deterrent says he cannot draw and cycle on his turn. Okay. He can only do it on my turn, and he can only do it once on his on my turn. Okay. This this will be very helpful in the games to come, as we see. Okay, here's my ley line, but it's too late almost. It's not too late. I could cast this, but me tapping out at this point for him to just violent outburst is not acceptable. Um, yeah, because he'll just he'll violent outburst at instant speed. You see, you see, another, this is another reason why um, you know violent outburst possibly could be banned because you know in why this is on the stack you just get a bunch of creatures so which i can't cast it yet but you know it's coming basically so we attack taking down 15 he fetches goes down 13 to get his colors so he can only do this once so because we draw so he does have to play around this and, it, and us drawing through this just gives us more counter spells, more lands. It's our land drops. Like, we're, we're happy here. So we get our, land, our fourth land. But I don't dare tap out. Okay. Because he can do this at instant speed. And and he would get he would get two 4-4s. Four okay. When he cycles, he scries. Like, that's... I could, but I'm just going to end up killing him, and then he'll just live in him again after I kill him. So we could play that game, um, but we're, we're going to choose to play this game where I have four mana, I have two spell starter sprites. You're going to have to be able to go through them. Um, the biggest thing about spell starter sprite in this matchup is they cannot be force negationed. Okay. That is, that is the key here. So, and then we obviously see another one. So... Like, if this was during his turn, sure, Force Negation is turned off, and, you know, he can't he can't do anything. But now he can Force Negation these. Not particularly this, but... So, he does have Subtlety. So, this card's good enough in this matchup to where we just throw it back on the top of our deck. Okay. He evokes. And obviously, this is the perfect scenario for him to evoke subtlety because it brings back if the if the um living in goes off so we just do that we let it we let the trigger go off um to put on the top of my deck and then we it, it's important to let that trigger resolve and go to the top of my deck so we can't do something not that he would be able to do anything but I, I think that's the correct play if we really want to get down to the nitty gritty of stack placements. So then we we spell starter sprite again. Now he probably has force negation in his hand, but I just went through two spell starter sprites and I'm going to get one back. So which is nice, but that's a lot for one card. You know he's playing a two for one at instant speed that would just automatically win him the game for three mana. There's no other card in Magic that does such a thing. It just doesn't, and that's why, you know, you know, we're we're trying to do things a little bit fair, you know. And luckily, we had four mana. Because if I didn't have, if I miss land drop, we lose right there on the spot. We lose, unless I draw into land and then um, damnation or something like that, which is not what I want to be doing. I also fetched, and I should have fetched for a black source, and we'll see why here in a while. I made a mistake. Um, and the mistake was I can't cast both of these, and I can't cast these if I even wanted to. So it's a there's a because he has one in his hand, it's very possible he doesn't have the second, you know. But and I could have cast this, but this doesn't clear out his graveyard, so these are worthless right now. That's the bad thing about Leyline of the Void, and I probably should have aggressively mulligan for these, but I didn't because I thought my hand was good enough, and I had the sprite in my hand. That's why, that's why I didn't do it. So. So, and this could be this could be a big scenario here to where he didn't have anything here uh, for the Aubra, but to have Drown in the backup to protect this, to have lethal next turn, is a huge deal. It is absolutely a huge deal going in. So, anyway, we go to 
So we can do it if he dead draws, you know, and we have double stealth spell search, right? Which having two cards of your 60 in your hand at one time in the first, what, four turns of the game, how often is that going to happen? <laughs> like, come on. Like, not very often. Not very often. That's how that's how narrow this is. Now, granted, when I, when I sideboard, I'm playing two force of negations as well. Okay, so I do have that extra ump to my deck to be able to post sideboard. I can help him. I can fend him off a little bit more. But he also has his things too, you know. So it becomes harder and harder. So here we go. And we are blessed. Oh, we're blessed with a few things. So one, the first thing I see is uh, we are land heavy. Extremely land heavy. We don't uh, heavy. We... Uh, we don't see this March to Rush Sorrow. March is okay. There's, we just ran out of things to take out and put in. Um, this can also help if the game goes super long for whatever reason to gain a bunch of life. Um, that can be really nice. Um, we have Mastermind to keep him at bay so he can't cycle only during my turn and once per turn. Or we draw. Um, we also have an Opt. And then we have five land. Or four land. So, we're pretty good overall in this. We're happy to see him Ley Line of Sanctity twice and Breeding Pool once. So, this basically turns off uh, Orcus Bowmasters. Um, that's really the only thing it turns off. It used to turn off a lot more. He's probably playing it more for anti Thoughtseize, but Thoughtseize isn't good enough to play right now. So, um, we don't play it. So... Um, so anyway, we'll continue to go. We land, we tap. Now this is one of the scenarios that preordain is probably better. It just is. This this is one one position to where preordain is better. So I'm gonna dig two, draw one. So, but is it really like we're gonna see this and put it back on top? So the same thing happened, you know? Whether I preordain or I opt, you know, we still saw this. So what I say a lot of times is that preordain and opt, this this scenario happened. Now sometimes it won't happen. Sometimes that this will be to the third card down, you know? Sometimes it will. And it preordain eliminates that variance. But this is the only time that that would be okay, you know? Because we're definitely putting this card in our hand if we see it in preordain. All right, so he then besages my Ley Line of the Void. So we, we're we crying right now. We are. We are. We are in tear. We are like, what are you doing? The best thing about this scenario is we get the land, which is cool, but this thing's uncounterable. It happens no matter what, and we're... The thing that's saving us is he had double Ley Line Sanctity in his hand, which is that extra card. That extra card could have been Violent Outburst or some kind of Cascade spell. So we're we're happy on that. We get our land. We go ahead and grab a blue source because we have multiple black sources in our hand. And then he four cycles. Before he can do anything else, we go ahead and we Mastermind so he can't um, draw into that anymore he then he goes ahead and taps this so he doesn't really have anything going on he may have it may not but we're going to start this we play land play a blue source we play a blue source because we want to be able to we need to have both of these up next turn because we we have the impending doom you know this is just a dead card at the moment um it will continue this is kind of like this is kind of like the same thing as a damnation, just just in case things go really hairy and we want to extend the game. So, not really happy to have that. So we go here, we draw another counter spell. We are super happy with this. So, we go ahead and play that on black. Give us another black source. We have four. We have just enough. This will actually hurt us in the end. Um, I probably should have played this as a blue source, and you'll see why in a minute. So then he he's he has to play around this. 
this will this will lose him the game very fast. Now, obviously, we're not. I'm not in the game of giving him more cards because he's combo. So just the passive ability for him not to be able to draw multiple cards per turn is good enough for us. We're we're happy on this. So okay, so we get Field of Ruin, which I thought was going to be my fifth blue source, but this should have been my fifth blue source because now we're stacked, and now I don't have enough blue sources to play Counterspell, Counterspell Sprite, which is really strong. Um. If you play it correctly however i still have the things we need to do to accomplish this because i can counterspell sprite counterspell counterspell force negation you know i have force negation plus two others that i want so so we're pretty happy here um so but but this land choice coming in black is bad it's not but it would have been great if this, like, for instance, if I if I grab a um, Drown of the Lock and not a Spell Search Sprite, it, this is a great play. <laughs> I look like a genius, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So that's that's what I was thinking here. He he then at the end of my turn, or, you know, it blocks basically not my mo non main phase. Um, when I'm attacking so he doesn't take damage. He then Vile Outbursts. He Cascades. So for anybody out there, um, you're going to see this trigger right here. Um, you never you never counter the Outburst. You never counter the actual Cascade spell. You actually you wait for this to hit the stack and then um, you know the Living In hits the stack. You do the same thing with Crashing Footfalls and Rhinos. You let the Rhinos hit the stack and then you counter the you know, kind of the rhinos. So, just to make that clear, right? Uh, for newer players out there, possibly, that I didn't suggest that. But you let that trigger ability hit off the stack first. It's also why I try to teach um, newer players stack manipulation, because decks like this, you have to be able to understand the stack completely and fully as a player, or you'll make a mistake and even i make mistakes sometimes but this is one of those things once you see it once you'll never uh it's like bolting at tom Regoif, you know <laughs> once you do it once you'll never do it again so <laughs> all right so we we lead off with sprite we lead off with sprite because he can't. The only thing he can do is force negation and subtlety right now. Okay, and we have mana. We have mana to be able to counterspell subtlety if it comes down. Okay, um, so and and even if we didn't do that, we don't have to even counter the subtlety necessarily. Um, I could just counter the living end, uh, but it's at the end of my turn. So more than likely, he has another cascade spell. And this is where we get into the problems of living end is it's not this violent outburst. If he had violent outburst plus subtlety, so he pitches, plays subtlety, puts that on top of my deck, um, and say I counter, say I counter subtlety, okay, then I'm left with a pitch force negation. Uh, to handle his other cascade spell that's going to come down next turn, and I've just dealt, uh, I've just used four counter spells on his two cards, he, he well three cards I guess, and the fact that I had all, all these counter spells and the mana to cast it in my hand is so improbable to happen every single time I see this deck, um, that they steal a lot of wins because of it because of this interaction. They do this either at in my combat or the end of turn, and then they do another Cascade spell right after. And sometimes they flood out, and they'll have six mana at this point, and they'll just go Violent Outburst, uh, Shardless Agent, Shardless Agent. You know, if I counter the first Shardless, you know, or the first Living End, they'll do it again. And it's just, it's too much. So, and I'll have perfect, I'll have six mana and a force of negation. I'll do the whole thing. I'll go through all the motions and they'll still get it off like four or five times. And that's what, and we see uh, Waker of Waves here. He's kind of out of options here. You can tell he's out of steam. 
Or he's slow playing to where he, he needs a land and has to do something. So he, he gets a land. Plays land. So we're just kind of praying here. We got a lot to do. Um, I'm, I was looking for an opportunity to like heal to ruin, but I haven't got it yet. Because I do need the extra blue source so I can double counter. So I can hard cast all this stuff. I can still do two counter spells, but I'm worried out of my pants. And I have three counter spells. Like, why Why am I worried when I have three counter spells in my hand and, and still, like, you know, on the seat of my pants? That he could win like that it, it's nuts any other any other deck any other deck that if i had three counter spells and they have three cards in hand I, i'm not worried at all <laughs> but this deck i am and, and that's why I, and because of that violent outburst should probably be banned so here it goes so we we start this yep yeah. and we get a force okay and we get this now now I'm screwed here. See, now, now now, I'm screwed. If he has another force, which he can't, because he's down to one, but if he has some something else to do, for whatever reason, you know, like, I happen to I happen to win this turn, but I have one dead card. If I had another dead card in my hand, like, you could say this is dead too, but if this wasn't a counter spell, we lose. Just on the spot, we just lose. Um... And, and that's what I kind of mean by how this deck kind of rolls. So, and, and they went through, they went through a ley line of the void and, you know, a couple creatures. Cool. You know, but, and I would lose, you know, and basically because of this land drop too, if I would have had this, but you know, I could have drew something else, like something with black mana, like a drown. And, you know, then I look like. A genius and then it's like oh yeah this but but this is clear mistake i'm gonna have to think about that like these little little things in this matchup matter um and it's too close but i also think that violent outburst should be banned just because rhino's uh, putting eight power on the board on instant speed at the end of somebody's turn this is just too much it just is and i'm playing and and spell star sprite is by far the best card against it and even with this i'm i'm losing you know, I lose quite a few matches. It's it's 50-50 at best. It really is. Um, so, ever since Force Negation came into the, the format, this deck has just absolutely blown up. So, anyway, um, that is a, that's a review. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it as well. Um, for the Living In fans out there, you know, you live another day. <laughs> live to play another day i'm glad living in exists i i like it as a archetype i just think violent outburst is too much and as they as they've given them more and more cyclers throughout the years it has just gotten to a point where it's just too much you know and then rhinos on top of it i think i think it could be bannable i think it's top three uh, on the ban list um, of what's coming down in the future but that's that's my personal opinion i think it skews the meta pretty hard but it also in its own way it keeps the meta in check which i which i also understand and look at as well anyway if you got a comment about any of that stuff let me know down in the comment section definitely subscribe um helps the channel out helps the channel grow so anyway i will see you later have a good one